When you support News Channel Nebraska, you support Nebraska communities. Make your gift now by calling 888-800-1479. And we have something special for supporters of the Morning Mass with Father Joe. Become a sustaining member at $15 a month or make a one-time donation of $180 and we'll send you Father Joe's popular book, Fantastic Vocation. The winter weather is rolling in and it's a great time to cozy up with a good book. For a sustaining membership of $12 a month or a one-time donation of $144, we'll send you the Morning Mass Cup of Joe coffee mug. Enjoy a hot cup of coffee, a great book, and show your support for News Channel Nebraska and the place we call home. Make your gift now by calling 888-800-1479 or give securely online at newschannelnebraska.com. Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Our opening hymn is number 435, Seek Ye First. <clears throat> Seek Ye First the King of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. <clears throat> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist today, we pause. We ask Jesus to forgive us our sins. Lord Jesus, you call us to be your <clears throat> disciples. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you send us out to proclaim your love to all the world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you strengthen us on our journey with your presence in the Eucharist. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, source of or and origin of all fatherhood, who kept the martyrs St. Andrew Dunglock and his companions faithful to the cross of your Son, even to the shedding of their blood, grant through their intercession that spending, spreading your love among our brothers and sisters, we may be cho children both in name and in, in truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and there was a white cloud, and sitting on the cloud, one who looked like a son of man, with a gold crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Another angel came out of the temple, crying out in a loud voice to the one sitting on the cloud, Use your sickle and reap the harvest, for the time to reap has come, because the earth's harvest is fully ripe. So the one who was sitting on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, who also had a sickle. Then another angel came from the altar, who was in charge of the fire, and cried out in a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle. 
Use your sharp sickle and cut the clusters from the earth's vines, for its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and cut the earth's vintage. He threw it into the great winepress of God's glory. The word of the Lord. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Comes to judge the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, <clears throat> not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. The Lord comes, comes to, judge to judge the judge. earth. <clears throat> Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. The Lord, the Lord comes, comes to, to judge, judge the earth. earth. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. The Lord comes to judge the earth. <clears throat> Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Remain faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Alleluia. May the Lord be in your heart and in your lips, that you may worthily and fittingly proclaim this holy gospel. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will be not left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first but it will not immediately be the end. And then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, <clears throat> plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the skies. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord. Typically, during the last two weeks of the church's year, the church focuses our attention on end times, and very often the readings are from the book of Revelation. Revelation was one of the last books written in the Old Testament, probably around the year 100 or thereabouts. It's written in code, uh, another term for it is apocalypse. Apocalyptic writing is a writing in code usually used during a time of persecution. So those who are on the end who understand the meaning of the code, they can read it and it makes sense to them. To the outsider, <clears throat> they can read it and it doesn't make any sense, doesn't have any meaning to them. One of the ways I try to explain this type of writing to the uh, kids in high school when I was teaching the book of Revelations was uh, <clears throat> that sometimes Father Joe's sermons are so boring and so dull in his lectures and you just hardly can survive. And the only way you can survive is by sharing your misery with a classmate so you agree before class that whatever I write in the note, I mean just the opposite, because you wouldn't dare to write what you really thought. 
And so halfway through Father Joe's boring lecture, you pass a note to your classmate, and Father Joe catches you, and he marches down and grabs the note and reads it and says, this is one of the most interesting lectures Father has ever given him. We are so lucky to have him as our, our teacher. Well, there's certainly nothing I could do to, uh, you know, a a charge a child for something like that. As a matter of fact, I'd actually feel good about them that they think so highly of me. And uh, so that way, the kids could share their misery with one another without facing any uh, bad um, uh, consequences. Well, in the sense, the book of Revelation is that way. And as a result, for most of us, it's a very difficult book to read. But basically, this time of the year, the author is simply telling us the end times are near. We have to watch and be prepared. One of, the day, one of these days, each and every one of us will have to give an account of our lives. And um, <clears throat> in the gospel today, too, people are admiring the temple, and Jesus points out one of these days, in fact, very soon, uh, all this glory that you see is going to be leveled. It's going to be a pile of rubble. And the message for us is, too, that our kingdoms here on earth will some, some, someday soon come to an end, maybe quicker than we realize. Um, and so we have to be prepared. We have to work for what really matters. We have to seek the kingdom of God rather than our kingdom here on earth. So today, as we reflect in these readings toward the end of the church's year, and we'll hear even more like that in the days to come, let us ask God always to keep our focus where it belongs. Sure, we have to be practical. We have to be worried about the things of this world and uh, provide for ourselves and help others and so on. But our kingdom is truly an eternity, and that's where our focus has to be. So we have to spend more time in reflection and prayer asking the Lord Jesus to help us to turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. So when that time comes, when we have to give an account of our lives, we'll be ready to do so, and he'll be ready to be there to welcome us into the joys of his kingdom. You sent your son Jesus to be our Savior. Help us to listen to and to follow him, for he can alone lead us to the joys of eternal life. Pray for Pope Francis, for Archbishop Lucas, Bishop Hannafield, and Bishop Conley. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who serve us in public office, <clears throat> that they, especially in this time of crisis, they will strive to work together for what is best for our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents and teachers, that they may always strive to reflect the love of Jesus to their children every day by word and example, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are ill, especially those that are affected with the coronavirus, that they may experience God's healing presence and power, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the departed loved ones, we pray especially for Frank Aarons, who passed away last this, yesterday, that they may enjoy their eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For all people of our nation, that they will accept the results of the election peacefully, and Democrats and Republicans will work together for what is best for, for the people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of our unspoken needs and attention, let us pause and pray to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Dale Robbins of our parish and all the members of his family. His father died uh, this past week. He'll be buried in Humphrey on Saturday. So we pray for him and his family. We also pray for uh, Frank... um, Arts' family, Frank, died yesterday. He'll be buried here on Saturday. May they know the joys of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer this Mass this morning for all of our children in St. Isidore's Parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our Father in heaven, please grant us these and all our needs. 
by which we pray to you today in Jesus' name, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Father, the offerings we bring as we venerate the passion of your holy martyrs so that amidst the trials of this life we may always be found faithful and may offer ourselves to you as an acceptable sacrifice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Heaven of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and interwilling into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection 
until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to Jehovah is worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and partners, and with all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days and by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Share with one another the sign of Christ's peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please join me in making a spiritual communion. <clears throat> My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray. Renewed by the bread, we commemorate the holy martyrs. We humbly beseech you, O Lord, that abiding as one in your love, we may merit by endurance and eternal prize through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> may Almighty God bless you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Speed of God. And our final hymn is number 606. Like a shepherd he feeds his flock and gathers the lambs in his arms holding them carefully close to his heart leading them home say to the cities of judah prepare the way of the lord Go to the mountain top, lift your voice. Jerusalem, here is our God. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock, and gathers the lambs in his arms, holding them carefully close to his heart leading them home. Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Father does a very good job. Just like you would be having real Mass. We don't have no complaints. It keeps us in faith. We know Father Joe for 25 years, and we consider him a great friend. He's a saint. <laughs> Just trying to keep... Stay well. To right? Stay well, keep at home, and keep safe. Sometimes it gets kind of um, long days, and you don't know what to do with yourselves. We're up in that age to so we're vulnerable to catch anything. We like NCM. We listen to their news more probably than we do the other stations. 
the other stations that all they do is talk about crime, who killed who. And CN, they just give it as it is. Yes, we're thankful for, uh, for Father having it and the station. Yeah, that station. That station that is... That station, you can do a thing. <laughs>